pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I think we're going to continue with uh, the SERPIT presentation, review, and discussion of the draft TDR bylaws and map from SERPIT. Right. Nice to see everyone again tonight. Helen, I'm, I'm going to have to ask you to speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is always quite helpful. Ah, uh, that's good. <laughs> All right. So for those of you guys who, if you have, um, you know, if you have your computer or your tablet. I'm sorry, Helen. I can't hear you at all. Um, if you have your uh, computer and tablet with you, if you want to follow along, you can use the link in the original email. Um, that'd probably be the best way to, if, if you're kind of wanting to explore the map while we're also exploring it together. Um, okay. All right, Helen, you're a co-host now. All right. All right, should be coming up on the screen. Okay, so there's our map. Um, we, as we discussed last time, we we're going to focus in on the northern segment of Carver here. So basically what I did in preparing for tonight and for circulating the map last week was to look at the development categories that exist currently so so we can get an idea of what is the existing development in this northern part of Carver. Um, and what we find is that there's a lot of residential land, kind of the light purple here, some commercial, some industrial, kind of concentrated in the corners. Um, there's some like, church charitable kind of nonprofit lands scattered throughout. Um, there's mixed use land, that's, that's kind of this darkest purple here, and I'm thinking that that is probably cranberry bog land that also has a house, so, or, you know, it's often categories like that. But we are able to explore these further if we like to and kind of get to the bottom of what they are by clicking on things. So yes, this one's mixed use, primarily commercial, some agricultural, for example. Um, Helen? Yes. I'm sorry, what, what did you say was nonprofit land? Um, yeah, that's a different, so there's not many of them Usually it's church land. Um, Sometimes it's charitable land, like things held um, by like a housing nonprofit. Or I did I, I did mostly group those under the residential category. I'm but sorry, I just I can't understand you at all. And maybe slow down. Or I'm I'm so sorry. That's fine. Yeah. So those are. It, it just depends. There's very few of them. I think there's only a handful, and they are usually churches. If they're not churches, they're kind of a like a United Way or like a public interest. Okay. Um, kind of a thing like that. And what color are they? They are this kind of, um, this, this step below the darkest purple. So this is one, for example, here. And, yep. So, yeah. Actually, that's not one. Um, da, da, da. Not sure. Let's see if this is one. Ch church, yeah. So this is a church, for example. This gives you a, an example of what that looks like. All right, so some are, uh, I talked about the mixed use category. Um, there's an agricultural category here. The vast majority of these are cranberry bog lands, I think we'll find. So cranberry bog, for example, there. Um, then that leaves us with the um, couple other categories. Sometimes there are parcels where there's not a known use classified. I think a lot of times these are water, so that's the example here. This is a water body. Um, there's public land, so some preserved lands or you know, land under the town hall, for example, or library. Sometimes those are categorized those ways. Um, and then there's two categories of undeveloped land, and those are what we see in the yellow here. So the bright yellow are lands that have been identified as developable in the tax assessment database. And the tax records kind of parse that out between subcategories. So they'll have like developable commercial land, developable industrial land, developable residential land. But for these, for our purposes, those are just grouped here into one category of developable land. 
Um, and then similarly, the assessment records will include um, a category of undevelopable land. And I think oftentimes this is underlying wetland areas or areas known to be very undevelopable um, for, for the constraints that are on top of them. So that's kind of the base map that we are working with here. And when we're kind of considering where we want to target a receiving area, there are some other additional helpful layers that we can turn on and off. So different wellhead protection zones um, can be found in these top two layers, th top three layers, well, really. Um, sewer service area, to see that, it's helpful to turn off the um, the road inventory because it kind of is under there. But So that's kind of the sewer. I guess we talked about last time, it's not really the service area, but it's kind of the existing infrastructure extent. Um, similarly, water. Um, and then we have a layer that is the wetlands that lie over each of the parcels. Wetlands, um, this layer includes open water as well. And then um, we have the zoning, carver zoning map, and protected land as well. So those are kind of the menu of things we can consider when we look at these parcels for their appropriateness for receiving. And um, yeah, so I think what we want to do today is to try and drill into that more, kind of figure out exactly where we might think are appropriate for the receiving areas. I want to offer this up to you guys for if you have any questions, but then I have a couple mm, strategies I think can get us going pretty quickly toward that toward that direction of narrowing down the receiving area. So I'll pause here for questions if there are any questions. Go ahead, Sarah. Uh, I have one. Um, as I mentioned last time, we don't have any um, sewer right. in Carver. So what um, what is this sewer service category? What, what how is what is that identifying, actually? I think it's where there's infrastructure. Even if there's not service, I believe that there is, I mean, that's my understanding. That was my understanding from last time. No, we, we have septics. I, I mean, even the big developments. I don't know, because... There's no town sewer. Would, would that layer include things like um, stormwater control management and things like that for sewer? I don't think oh. so. I, I'm not sure. I mean, this was developed by an engineering firm, so... Because when you turn that layer off, it, it it gets rid of Route 44, which I suspect has some sort of stormwater management and yeah. you know, um, your hundred year storm event type mitigation is included. So I, w I would think yeah. maybe that's what what it's capturing. Yeah, that, that's probably what they're trying to do. It could be. Uh, we'd have to reach out to the engineering firm that did this to get more information. But it, because there isn't sewer service, it doesn't sound like that's going to be a determining factor for our purposes anyway. Um, it's just something that I included here because we have the information, but if it's not helpful or relevant, we don't have to consider it tonight. So, you know, we don't have to make it a rule that you have to be adjacent, for example, to this to be part of this receiving area. It's just a non-factor, I guess, if we want to think of it that way. Um, yeah. Go ahead. So, under the agriculture, which is a lot of the brownies, correct? Yep. So, within that, agricultural designation you have the land that's under 61a correct correct yes so we don't know exactly how many acres of that is delineated as wetlands that would be the actual cranberry bog and the upland that's protected under the 61a correct nope actually we do have a good idea of that so what i was able to do was to use um it's the state wetlands layer so it's not always like you know it needs to be field verified but the wetlands there does include bogs. And so I, I was able to, let's zoom in here, for example, try to find. So we have this big agricultural parcel here, right? So um, I divvied the wetlands up by parcel. So when you, um, let me show you. So see how it just illuminated that whole, all, the, all of those little shapes. They look separate, but they're actually one thing for this parcel. And then I calculated that acreage and I joined that acreage back to this to the parcel base underneath. So if we go here, um, we can select a parcel, scroll down, see what the overall acreage is, what the wetlands acreage was, and then the net upland area. So we do have a basis of information for that variable. So on 
I mean, I just key in in on like the end of Spring Street where it goes on to 58, I mean 44. Up here? The Spring Street. So that acreage that is brown, would that be upland? Yes, yeah, the blue is the wetland area. How many acres would you, has that been indicated as? So the net upland here is 30 acres, about 30 acres, 29. Out of a fi of total of fifty four. Uh, across the street. Yeah. On Spring Street, right on Spring Street. Up. Uh, yep. You know where they're hauling the fill out of? Yeah. Does the town have something that's in plan for that area, or would it? What? So there's uh, a. So that's the uh, where the gra mining the gravel as SLT is doing that, and they have a s approved subdivision plan on the property. So once they finish mining the gravel down to a level where they, you know, get to the furthest, um, then they plan to put in, I guess, kind of industrial, industrial business. You know, the the crack offices yeah. they could yeah. put yeah. Uh, these. Contractor bay type buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's no residential proposed down there. It's commercial. That's correct. It, yeah. I think it's zoned the Spring Street Innovation Area. Is that yes, it correct? is. Yeah. So it's zoned for for businesses, mm -hmm. not is residential. That area around the other side also, or is that somewhere that could be considered for residential? The brown on the other side of Spring Street. Yeah. So I think it's just that piece on the southeast. Side or south, you know, southeast side of the interchange. So the stuff to the uh, northeast would that would be the, uh, I guess, kind of suitable for residential. Yeah. So the acreage, and, and, and I might be wrong, but the acreage that we just put up where she indicated that there was like 30 acres there. Would that 30 acre parcel? be acceptable for residential development? I believe so. You know, if they come in and they meet the requirements, they would still have to do kind of a, the new <coughs> exercise and... No, no, I understand, but that might be an area that, that based on its location near the highway, mm -hmm. that part of town, it may be an area that we would find as a good receiving spot mm -hmm. to entice builders or potential building out that way. If that's the way that the committee or they would look at it. I, I'm just trying to figure out. No, that's, no, that's I mean, that's a great parcel size-wise that could mm. be, um, you could probably get a lot of units out there. Yeah. Yeah. It does have easy highway access. I, I don't see the where the water, how we get water out there. That's, that's the biggest thing. I know I know there is some water on the Plymouth line off of Spring Street, but uh, it's it's very limited out there. Yeah. Well, Isn't that right down the street from the Wells with the coal property? It is, yeah. Yeah. I think it's right mm -hmm. on the other side of the coal property, it, yeah. yeah. I, if I recall, if, if I may, Mr. Chair, Please. If, if, <coughs> excuse me, if I recall, of the people who were planning to develop that area knew knew that before they I mean they didn't come into town thinking we had town water on their property but so I mean they must have been aware of that <coughs> yeah I'm not sure I mean the conversation was just going to we were looking at North Carver mm -hmm. and we were mm -hmm. receiving and sending and for a prior conversation <coughs> Occurred, we talked about getting it near the highway with the direct access. That seems like the biggest parcel that I see out there that's on that corridor that, that may be able to uh, have a bunch of have some development. That's all. I think yeah. Yeah. Right. I looking at that area. Well, what, what about the um, yellow parcels in the northwest corner? Yeah, can I? So I'm going to jump in here and just make, make um, one suggestion to like maybe 
structure this. Um, I don't. I didn't want to make any assumptions, you know. As I was, I just wanted to put the lay of the land out here. But is it fair to say that these, you know, the these developed residential parcels, none of these are going to be prime oh. receiving areas? Is that fair to say? The developed residential parcels? Yeah. Well, theoretically, to the west of uh, Route 58 at the intersection of Plymouth Street. Up here. This one here isn't included in the uh, preferred development area, but it is on the water line, and I know... Uh, I'm sorry, Connie, what street is that? That's, um, this is Plymouth Street to the west of uh, Route 58. So that yellow lot is the residences at White Oak or whatever that's currently being developed. Is that being developed right now? Or what, I forget what it's called, but... I, I didn't realize they had started. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. They already have some little models yeah. up, right? Oh, yeah, there's people, I think there's probably people living in there, so already. Mm -hmm. So, so that we can see things easier, I think I'm, if, if you guys, if it's the committee's guidance, I would drop out all of these light purple parcels. Like these are single family homes that don't yeah. seem. Yeah. yeah, I would drop okay. those out. So I'm going to do that right now. And we can have a little bit clearer picture probably. Okay. Does that mean we've any residential lot, like say I have a two acre lot, even though it's in the receiving area, is not a receiving area? Right. Okay. That, I think that's what you're saying, right, Helen? Yeah, pretty okay. much. That, you know, that I, I there are some oversized lots where, you know, maybe one day they would be subdivided, but that those are probably in neighborhoods anyway, so would we really want to it just doesn't seem like the prime target here yeah, I think, like even if you if you had like a even if you had like a 10 acre lot that was off a of great meadow or Jowett or one of the you know one of those residential neighborhood areas it, it wouldn't make sense to do one of these types of developments there I wouldn't think yeah um, and I, it you know I would think if I'm a resident in that neighborhood it's not ideal yeah so I think it makes I agree. sense yeah I agree it wouldn't make sense but I, I wouldn't want to see it happen just by saying oh it's in the receiving area. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So so that just dropped out all of those light purple parcels. So we're kind of whittling down like where we, where it would be appropriate to go. Um, yes. And the next category that that might be easy to do with is um, some of these public lands, like. Oh yes, please yeah. definitely take yeah. them out. <laughs> um, but I just want to make sure I'm gonna I'm gonna query those and just see who owns them because for example the one that you're talking about here the quarry that turned out that's saying to me that it's um, like a ma mass department of public works land right the state surplus that and the private developer bought it so the records may not be updated mm. on that parcel okay I'm just gonna do a quick search by attribute <laughs> So then we can see kind of what some of those are just to make sure that there wouldn't be any that for some reason are appropriate to leave in as a potential receiving area parcel. Um, looks like there's about 60. And if we sort them by owner, once I find that. I'm having trouble hearing you, Helen. I'm sorry. Well, that's fine. I'll just, just keep telling me and I'll keep readjusting. Um, all right. So it looks like for these public lands, a lot of them are owned by the town of Carver. Mm -hmm. um, some are owned by Massachusetts. Some are owned by Mass Department of Public Works. And one is owned by Mass DEP. So um, are there any that we want to look at specifically? Or is the committee fairly certain that we could exclude these as potential receiving areas? Oh. Yeah, you you need to exclude those. Okay. The town of Carver ones are Article 97 land. Okay. So they have to be excluded. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just keep. And Muddy Pond belongs to the state. 
So obviously you're not going to be building on Mighty Pond, but that's in that group. Gotcha. <clears throat> Sarah, what's Article um, oh, 97? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, to do that. It's an amendment to the state constitution, and it talks about how a parcel is purchased, and um, that was purchased with state funds for conservation and okay. lots of different purposes. Yeah. Okay. I that just it makes it Article 97 there. <clears throat> All right, so taking out those two categories, that, that takes out a, you know, a good chunk of what's in North Carver here and leaves us to narrow in on some specific areas. So where would you guys like to go next? Um, on Plymouth Street here, I think this uh, yellow property is the Harriman House here. I, I, I think that's, uh, that's mislabeled as yellow. Okay. I wouldn't, on Green Street or in the historic district in this area here, I, I don't know, uh, I think the town's spoken by establishing the historic district and, and probably wants to maintain it. Yeah. All right. Let me pull yeah, up. Yeah, you're probably not going to want to put commercial in the historic district. Gotcha. Well, the, yeah, the, not heavy density anyway. Right. You have the, the Og Mall and the... Um, small ones, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are we talking commercial stuff or are we talking residential? Well, it's a mixture. It, uh, the TDR should be a mixture of, of everything. It should have some commercial, or the opportunity to put commercial and residential in a mixed use. So we're taking all the TDR stuff out of the North Carver Historic District? I would think so, yeah. Okay, well, I'm, I'm only going what we got for the bylaw that's there, and the bylaw that we got in that early stuff said that that the historic districts wanted it, correct? Am I wrong? Yeah. Um, I, mean, I think, I yeah. We're on a committee to make those recommendations. I'm just simply saying that the, based on the, uh, I guess, development plan and the town plan for whatever and everything indicated that the village districts were the areas that they wanted to go because they were close to the That's not me. I no, no, I, I, I agree, but I, I, I think I think the town has made a, a point by establishing a historic district with uh, yeah. certain restrictions in it, and uh, I think... I would agree. I mean, if you would yeah. ask me, do I want it in a historic district, big apartment, I would say no. I just want to let you know that I don't know if that decision sets in off anything else that would have to be addressed. So, so I think the master plan refers to having those mixed use things in in a um, in a village district, but not in a historic. District. Right, right. And, well, and I although think we was one of the ones that was mentioned, and that's yeah. the only reason why. Yeah. yeah, you're totally you're totally right on that because like this. So this is the map from the last time we met. So this purple would have been a you know potential sending area in previous analysis. Um, but you know, again, it's it's your guys are the committee at this point at this time, so it's up to you. And if you don't, you know, if you think that that's a historic district that should not be touched, then that's the that's the direction we can totally go. Um, for some reason, I I don't have so I have the zoning here, but I'm not sure how that historic district overlaps with the zoning. Is where does that historic district don't lie? The, don't the historic district and the village district up in North Carver kind of overlap? They do, yes. They, they, they overlap by quite a bit, but uh, everything on Green Street and on Plymouth Street to the east of Route 58 up onto Gate Street, I think it is. I think, is, I think you're right. Is the protected area. Yeah, up to yeah. Gate Street. Mm -hmm. All right, so really anything um, east of 58 here. I mean, there's, there's properties on 58 that I think should be included, like, uh, yeah. Okay. okay available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Between, what, was this Green Street? Is that what you mean? Yeah, and that's the Lake and Ham Green right Lake there. Lake Green's right here. So from here to Gate Street is all this story. Now I got a question. See the area that's in brown behind that? Mm -hmm. Would that be counted off of Gate Street, or would that be counted off of Plymouth Street in... Is that in the historic district or outside of it? Like how deep does it go off there? I think it would depend on the address of who owned it, Duke, mm -hmm. because if they live on Gate Street, then it's, you know what I mean? It, it's accessible through Gate Street. I, I think it's somewhere down near 
Mr. Belbin's property there. Oh, I yeah, I, some I, of it. I know I, what it is. There's a couple of cranberry box in there and yeah. some woods. Dave Olson used to own them. Yeah, Dave Olson owned one of them. His property. I don't know who owns it now, but I'm just saying where we are, and we may say to preserve it. All I'm saying is to take collectively look at the areas that have some size to them. Hmm. Do we? I mean, at some point we should kind of rank where we want to start to develop on those ground or on the bigger areas and reduce it down as far as the seed. Mm -hmm. Senate district is just going to be if somebody get a lot or something that they want to send out, they can preserve. Well, we're more worried about where the receiving districts are because that's going to change the density of that area. Right. So, so I just don't know if we want to take that. If it's off Plymouth Street enough and it's not going to attack, it's not going to um, affect the historic visibility of that area, then, then I say, why take it off? Right. Mm -hmm. because so, I, the town down the road. That might make sense. Yeah. So, um, Mr. Chair, if I could address that. Please. So, that particular property, for example, is in a is in a residential agricultural um, zone, whereas the, the those pink ones, right on fifty eight, those are all zoned commercial. So, I mean, it depends on. So, you couldn't be putting commercial off of the. The one off Gate Street. So I'm trying to get it. I, I'm talking about with TDR. We're talking about residential. I don't. Okay. I mean, maybe we're talking about commercial development, but I thought we were strictly having the conversation on transfer and development rights for residential, not for commercial. Yeah. Rights. Am I correct on that? Or it's. I'm sorry that it's escaping me at the moment, but but the basic answer to the question is that you could shape the TDR bylaw however you you kind of want it it's an overlay district so if you want it to include both residential and mixed use commercial you can write it that way mm -hmm. even if the underlying zoning is a residential zone okay right for example along the route 58 corridor you might say okay well let's do a mixed zoning where we have say apartments and you know the commercial use right. and then yeah. when you get off the main drag then that's where you want to see residential so part of our bylaw could say in this area we want mixed use <coughs> and only residential and mixed use and still have a tbr bylaw mm -hmm. yeah. i think so, yeah, so. That's, yeah that's really what i would look at yeah. in that area i would assume that we want to see residential be built out there but yeah i don't want to see a mall go up there that's right exactly exactly i i would like to and this may just be me but i'd like to start with the yellow properties because sure. mm -hmm. even though they're not um, necessarily all residential, residential is underlying zoning, so I mean, technically you could do that. Um, so in this, uh, I, so I guess in this area here down um, by Plymouth Street, are there particular parcels that you think are good receiving parcels? Well, the, the one that kind of looks like a dragonfly that's that is being developed. Okay. Yeah. So that's an X. And, and it's residential, so that yeah. I guess is off the. But I, I don't see why any of those other properties couldn't be part of it. It doesn't mean that they have to be available, correct? Somebody could come in and tear down Shaw's and yes. and do what they wanted if they had the money. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to start maybe doing it just so you kind of can see where we're going here. Um, so, what, so what are those pink parcels there? I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, it's fine. These are those would be commercial, um, commercial, and if we want to get the specific. Yeah, so this is Shaw's, Shaw's yeah. CVS, oh, CVS. Uh, Honeydew, Plaza, yeah. Yeah. McDonald's, yeah. and this is Cumberland Farms. Right. Yeah. This is the vacant lot next to Tom's. Mm -hmm. What's the yellow all the way to the left? This or this over here? Yeah, that, that's off of Plymouth Street. That's, that's um, I think, isn't that part of Buzz Artiano's? It's just adjacent to his commercial. Right. Yeah. Let's see. Because that's a cast. Um, Precast. Arrowhead and. Um, MB, MBL. Cordwood Circle. Yeah. But it does have water access. It does. So, Simeon, is that. Ring yeah, and that whole that's section. Asphalt property. It's a Simeon, right? I think. Can you turn on the um? No, Simeon's the rooms that are there. 
There's a couple subdivisions. Simeon's is behind the old, uh, where the CBS oh, is now. Okay. So that's actually, this is cordwood, right? Yep. And this is Arrowhead or whatever it is across the street. Mm -hmm. Or is no, I think, way, actually, I think. No, you're right. This is uh, Martiana, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then to the right is uh, L SLT. SLT construction. Yeah. That, that's actually owned by Buzz Artiano, and there's a lot of um, commercial businesses in there, in that little cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if those yellow lots also belong to him. I don't, I don't know, but. I, I, I would think we should include, right? I, I, I don't see yeah. any yellow lots really on here that. That shouldn't be included. Yeah. Okay. No, I agree. All right. So what we would do? So if, if say we're talking about these three yellow lots here. And which one is Capeway? Where is Capeway? There is it the purple or the brown? Um. That's the motorcycle track. That's in Middleborough. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know we can all hear it, but it's actually in, in Middleborough. <laughs> I, I would think that, that that area would be one of the most preferred developable mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just um, copied those parcel, parcels into the, a new layer, and that layer can be our um, draft receiving area as we go around here. So, so that's what we have the ability to do is as we can, you know, we can pick out specific parcels and then kind of say, yes, like we want this in the receiving area. Um, Helen, Helen, can I ask you to do us, at least me a favor? Can you make them like red or something? Sure. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm yeah. not, no, not I, there's too much purple. No, you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's I mean, definitely I like not purple, green. but. <laughs> yeah. um, maybe a blue. We don't have much blue on the, like a teal. Let's see if that helps. That's good. Yeah. It'll interfere with our wetlands, though. It's kind of close to the wetlands, yeah. yeah. Well, that's true, but she, she turned off the wetland layer, so. Yeah. Uh, maybe a darker? Yeah. Mm. Let's go we'll see. We can nice. <laughs> Truly interactive. Mm. All right. So I think getting back to that point of a kind of like redevelopment, um, like you were saying, like if the Shaw, you know, someone could theoretically buy the Shaws and put in something different. Um, do we want to kind of select this? Like, is it appropriate to have the whole corridor be a potential receiving area? Oh, yeah, I would. I would think all the mm -hmm. commercial areas and on Fifty Eight there, right? I think you got, for the most part, you got most of them on. Uh, when I click on the PDA mm -hmm. area I there. Talk about a lot we do. If Lobies was to decide on the other side of so that's right. Change their purpose, then then. That's a big property to develop. Yeah. Property that, you know, that so, to see. so, Helen, in the upper uh, left-hand corner. Yeah. Okay. If you go above 44. Yes. So on one moment, I think I just need to turn off one thing. Um, you'll see a lot more yellow. Grab these guys. You don't want. Those are part of that redevelopment area. No, no, I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the ones. Um, oh, on the right-hand side of 58. Yeah. So there. It, oh, she's having trouble getting there. So, so if you go up above 44, and you go to the new um, scoot, scoot to the left a little bit. Yeah. See that? Oops. No, no. I meant to the right. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Okay. So see the interchange, the 44, 50. 58 interchange right above that on the right hand side of the road is a little pink lot mm -hmm. yeah that's that um noria or whatever it's yeah, changed yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah. so they have 29 acres it, 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 that's the one we were talking about last time excluding their own what they built there um there will need to be a wetland crossing to get on it but there was a project at one point that where that got approved but that's Mostly upland. Once you get across that wet part, I believe it's what total about thirty acres, of which about ten is buildable. I think that's right. That was it. That's right. exactly right. Because there's a lot of wetland on the back, because it abuts the wind and tucks it. So, yeah. yeah, International Golf owns that property, and we've been speaking with with the owner, 
And he does have a development plan for um, some form of commercial development. Oh, okay. Uh, that right now is still in the, uh, you know, the uh, preliminary stages of, of discussion. So okay. I, we could include it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. If we want to include it as part of a more commercial, what he's planning right now is some form of commercial development. Right. Well, it, it's not like he's required to to TDR it, right? He could put whatever he wants in there. And yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then on the other side of 58, where you see the two, the two small pink parcels right across the street? Yeah. And the little, and the re uh, hmm, sorry, the yellow one under it? I believe that's the front part of Aubuchon's land, that Aubuchon Plaza. Yeah, that's that Duncan we, and Aubuchon. Yeah, yeah, that we were talking about last week, too. And Excuse me, I don't know. Sounds like he doesn't have plans right now, but... You know, maybe this would be something he would be interested in, or a future owner. I I don't see why you wouldn't add in all the the yellow and purples yeah. in there. Yeah. So that so you, that one, yeah, right there, that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See. Okay. And that has some wetlands on it too, but not not most of it. I I don't know how much is upland, but it's I think it's a fair amount. So I'm just going to grab kind of all these yellow for now. Um, does, that, does that look about right there? So the, well, the yellow is on Montello Street. You are being acquired by the developer for the uh, root for, uh, for the um, urban, renewal. urban renewal area. And so they have a, a another use that's you know designated you know more of mm. the uh, okay. warehouse distribution area. And I believe they also own that yellow piece between uh, Montello and Route 58. This That's where the uh, new entrance to Montello Street is going to be coming through. Oh, okay. New, uh, yeah. So I was really only talking about the one between the Aubuchon and the, yeah, that, yeah, the Duncan. Yeah, that one, that okay. bottom yellow one. Mm -hmm. I think we could add in the old Shaw's Plaza, too, give that give the developers there an opportunity to work with that place. It's uh, It's been pretty empty for some time. Yeah. That's a deep purple space with the building at the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But even those lots that he said that, that 44 developers looking at, we would include that in the TER anyway, right? We, I mean, it's already going to be developed anyway. We're not right. giving them the benefit. Yeah, it's just, I yeah. Give them one more. Th I would include a, all the lots up there, all the yellows mm -hmm. and purples. If they can save some property from a, from a sedent area yeah. for a project they already have planned, why wouldn't we, yeah. you know? Yeah, give them that opportunity. Yeah. Well, they, they're not required to use TDRs to develop these properties. Right. 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 The opportunity, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would rather have them have the opportunity to, to do something. It's been... I mean, we love the warehouse and everything, but it's been it's been kind of nothing's been going on for some time but yet. The other side of the receiving is the sending. I mean, you know, the sending. Right. I mean, yeah. We get it, so they may be able to save some land somewhere else in Carver in order to get with what they want yeah. to build there to to incentive to save some land and do something for the town. They can use those. Yeah. Right, because it wouldn't change the zoning. I, I don't think. No. Because yeah, the zoning on that piece is Green Business Park. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta go. And that would remain. Bye, Thank Duke. You. Nice to see you. <laughs> what about those, Helen? The one you have your your cursor on right now? Those yeah. two? Are those the country? No. It's before, before the old. Dairy it, it's okay. And then that one and. It says Westlight Development. Oh, that's yeah, that's the one, just to somewhere. just yeah. south of the Country Mouse. Yeah, right there. And then the and then um. Because I believe I believe this is Country Mouse and this is the old Larry property. Okay. It's yeah. ODR. It's residential, so it's turned off because it hasn't been updated. Right. It's ODR made it, took it over, and then these are the vacant lots that are wooded next to it. Yeah. So I, if it were me, I would let the Country Mouse one be. Um, it it now has a house on it with a in, as a little store inside. But um, like Duke was saying, this might give them an option to all, all of this. Option. All of that, yeah, yeah. I would put all of that in there, yeah. And what's the purple parcel? That's a mixed use because they've got the. House but plus but the it's a little the, yeah. those lots are a little deceptive because behind each of them is a riverfront area, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. it's so it's not as big as you. 
I, I would just include the yellow lots for that reason um, because it's very um, it's very wet back there. Just the bottom one, because I think the is it the top one was the or no both of the. Okay. Yeah, both. Yeah. And what about the pink one? Sorry. The two yellows and the pink. <clears throat> now you were saying the you wanted to keep the purple out of it. Oh no 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 she's she's marking the um, TDR areas with the this kind of teal green. Oh yeah 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 but that's what I was saying was the pink and the purple up there the the country mouse and the other one. The like oh. country mouse goes right to the Plumpton line though. Right. Right yeah, but she, but she's in Carver. She's yeah. in Carver, uh -huh. one piece. And he's, and he's on the other side. Well, I'm saying that purple piece up right at the border, you could include that. I just don't, I just wanted people to know that it's not as buildable as one might hope. It's yeah, but somebody yeah. might want to grab all four of those properties yeah. and... Right. Right. So it, it's probably a... And I would put that pink one in too. Bottom the, here? No, no, up, yeah. Oh, that one there too. Okay. Is that the mosquito guy? Are you able to do that? I think so. Actually? Yep. Let me I just. I can just undo that for one second and then. Oh. And did you uh, also apply it to the Aubuchon and the, the Dunkin' Donuts and yeah. that? That could easily be converted at some point. Easily. Yeah. 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 Especially with the development going in behind it. Yeah. Okay. So what they're saying, Helen, is those three um, pink lots just below. <coughs> excuse me. These guys. Yeah, these three should probably be included in that as well. All right. Yeah. So it's, I'm trying. It's like having to juggle my Zoom controls and like everything. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Kind of working off that area, like to the west here. Does anything make sense? Yeah, I, I don't see why we wouldn't add all of that in aside, right? Because it doesn't change the zoning for green business. Yeah, and I, I think the thought being like, who knows what's going to happen to it, right? It right. may get developed, it may not, and at least giving whoever has it options would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, just don't turn off the the wetland area there. <laughs> There's a lot of it up there. There is, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, obviously, it's a, to these two, maybe, mm -hmm. for, for now. Let's we'll start there. Um, okay. Um, got a couple of, like, single-family house lots mixed in here, but... Um, are your, what are your thoughts about including those just for like a cohesive? Yeah, because those have all been acquired. Okay. They are single family homes, but they've all been acquired to be part of the future development. Yeah, except for the one. Remember? Right. There's yeah. one left, right? Yeah. Right, but you should still give them the opportunity. To the, yeah, so just, just the yellow purpose. ones, right? That's what you're thinking? Oh, the, mm -hmm. Okay. I would leave the top pink one alone, but I would include the other two residentials because that's that's up to them if they want to sell it to that's true that's true those those two it'll yeah. give just them a, it'll give them a better value on the property acquired, but it's just not it hasn't been updated yet. It hasn't been updated yeah so it's mm -hmm. just to leave that little little pink one up top alone because that's yeah. not part of that about this dark purple? I think that's a mixed-use parcel. I would think so. Okay. Uh, I would, I'm sorry, yeah. the dark purple what? Uh, the mixed-use sounds, seems like that's a mixed-use parcel. Okay. Um, well. I don't, I'd leave that little pink spot, a uh, little pink house there, though. I think yeah, that's, that's... that one that's in the middle of the bog there. <laughs> yeah, you can see it. No. Uh, and then as you come down Route 58 there, uh, on a little to the right. Oh yeah, well, I'm sure you want. Uh, yeah. I would include those uh, those pink properties right on 58 there too. 
Mm, th um, these ones? These well, ones? Yeah. Yeah. unless they're, even if they're single family house lots? What is it? I said even if they're single family house lots? Well, the, they can sell their house, right? Yeah. Although I would leave the old train state, that one that you were just on, mm -hmm. that's the old Carver train yeah. depot, and I would leave that one, that's but I would, I would give the other two there the opportunity that if they want to sell or somebody comes in with a good offer, they have that, that opportunity. So I'll zoom out for a second here, what we have so far. Um, do you want to kind of maybe think about this corner next? I That's, um, that's a landfill that oh. has solar panels on it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are the, the darker purple properties in that area right on Plymouth Street? I see there's a small, um, behind, well, we, we, we greened up the yellows. Uh, to the left of, uh, right on 58, there's the, I think it's, is that the cement factory and? Down in this, down, down Southmore, or? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm you mean the pre, pre, precast? I was, I was looking over here. Oh. Now this is a house. Sorry. <laughs> that's a house. Can we? The, that's a whole. No, that's commercial. No, it's commercial. Those, commercial. Those two are commercial, but the yeah. cul-de-sac to the left is is uh, residential. Yeah, residential. No, no, that one. No, right. that's commercial as well. Yeah, that's all. Oh, it's, oh, okay. Is that uh, industrial park commercial condo? Commons Drive or something, yeah. or whatever it's called. It's um. This is mm. next to SO. That's what, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But but the other other three, I would. I don't see why you wouldn't put them right on the water line there. Hmm. So these two, and then the the commercial condo. Yeah. Okay. Okay. These little slivers here. Mm -hmm. um, is it worth including those since they might be consolidated with? Other properties? Uh, the master developer for Route 44 tried to acquire those, but they wanted more than what they were worth. Okay. So maybe just the remaining uh, purple ones next to the green ones that you just yeah. 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 highlighted? Yeah. Okay. You're going to see where 44 just slides right through those properties because you know, ends are on the other side. Okay. And I would I would think that you could add all the properties in down to Magic Air. Is that what it is? Mm. Can someone give me a point on the Yeah. So I think it's the last purple property on 58. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right there. Sorry, gotta move it a little. Um, can you can you zoom zoom in on it a little bit there? Thanks. Yeah. This. So this is where. This is the the Dollar General right here. This is Cranberry Crossing. Magic Air is right here. Yeah, I would think you could add all all of those four four properties there. I would even go so far as to say across the street would be. Uh, this is the Don Finetti's property. Yeah. In here as well. All of this, I believe. We just want to leave the. Right. And then how about the Frosty Dog property? In that's, between. that's in there, yeah. Well, that's right on. No, that's, that's up. Yeah. See yeah. yeah, 58 cents. All of this here? Yeah, yeah all of that, yeah. The pink and the purple. As well as this across the street here. Because this is Norfolk Power, and this is the place next door. That's. That's okay. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And then these these yep. four? Just yeah. this house here. This is a residential home. I mean you could. You could include it, but it's a relatively new residential home. Yeah. 
We, we might want to ask him first. I would think so. <laughs> he owns all that land right there. Yeah, so. I know. He may like it, he might not. I don't yeah. know. We don't know. And then you get a, well, you get Agway and the glass place. It's all up here. This is the lot where the new Agway is going, and yeah. this is the glass place. Mm. And then that's, um, the, that's the pain management clinic there. <clears throat> right, so those. Even up to here. Shown in that yellow. Our, this is that office building. Mm hmm. And then this is McMahon Insulation. <coughs> Excuse me. So the one yellow spot, that's all under development. It's right currently now. being developed, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very but I would, I would still in include it for continuity, right? Excuse me? I would still include it for continuity. 20, 25 years down the line. Yeah, I, I don't think it hurts to include it. I mean... And then that blue is a town-owned parcel that the redevelopment is trying to sell. I was going to say, yeah, that's a good developable way, piece of property. Okay. Yeah, we think more interest will occur when... Uh, the other two projects are probably everything from this purple down to the shallow. I would agree yeah. with you, yeah. All right. <clears throat> How about this little? Yep. Yep. Okay. Definitely. That was the glass place, right? Mm -hmm. That's the glass. Yeah, it's that little pink. Is the glass the old glass place? Okay. It might still be there. It is. It's still there. Yeah. That's the fire station. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want to leave the fire station. Yeah. And we think, what about this area here? That's, that's all uh, the historic all district, yeah. Including this lot here, that's up for sale. This is the multifamily home with rentals. Mm. And yeah, it starts, uh, it starts below where her cursor is, so maybe there's a, that small area where that, maybe this small area up to, up to here is outside the, uh, Historic district, but the historic district starts uh, yeah. at the <coughs> property line here. That's okay. true, that's where the sign is, yeah. Okay, so that might be considered more of a gateway to the historic area, too, so you might want to think of it that way. You know, based on what you guys were saying the last time about certain gateways and certain properties in the town that have that kind of heart and soul feel for the town. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to give that property heart and soul, but. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's a, it's a nice enough piece of property. I actually thought it was two pieces of property and I thought the town owned half of it. Zoom us out here to see where we are. So you have a good concentration along the like main main highways here. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do we want to go back up to, do we want to explore this area more or go back up to the Spring Street? Yeah, probably, well that's, some of this area here is the historic area, right? So. We can't really do anything there. Right, we want to, to kind of stay off High Street too, yeah, I would think. High Street, but it's all residential. There's not much, except for maybe this they, area. they don't have water, but there it looks like there's a couple. Oh, are those those? They they're the unbuilt parcels from that uh, developer that passed away, I think. Okay. And this is that Eight Street property that Duke was talking about, and that's the horse farm. Yeah. I would leave the horse farm yeah, off. Yeah, I would leave that too. That's definitely Carver. <laughs> and, uh, and that, uh, they'd have to come in this off. This is an old railroad, you said? It's an old railroad bed. It's federally owned, yeah. It's owned by the feds? Pardon? You said it's owned by the feds? I, I thought it was. The, no, uh, well, it, it, <clears throat> if there were rails on it, it would be regulated by the feds. But it's on private land, I think. I don't know. That's what this, this, this end. All upland. Yeah. It's all prime developable real estate. Yeah. And all they need to do is purchase one lot here to get access, right? Well, I well, I, I, I don't know how they'd be able to do that through the historic district. They'd have to come through Gate Street where the, uh, the access roads are located. And that would that would be all right too. Meaning, you mean they couldn't put a roadway in off of Plymouth Street because it's historic? I, I don't think the Historic District Commission is going to allow people to pull down one of the historic houses in town to put in a, mm. a roadway. The access roads are off Gate Street for that property. And I, I think that's probably the best. 
best solution to that. Sorry, is, is this Gate Street or is this yes, Gate? Is. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, then would you go ahead and just designate that and then with the future plan that if you're going to access that, you go through Gate Street? I would think that would be, mm -hmm. yeah. so that would be fine. Can they get to it off High Street? It doesn't look like it. It looks like a water. Uh, yeah. water yeah. So we're thinking the two brown? Yeah, I would think so. Are there any, um, is the brown totally upland? Um, sorry, let me just see. Maybe we could just check. I think the brown's upland. There was a little bit, I think, of wetlands, yeah, but I think, on, right? yeah, now this one's over. Um, well, they may be being hidden. Yeah. So there's wetlands here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's wetlands where? This, um, right there at the top. Oh, yes, uh -huh. yeah, that's what I thought. This one's clear, but. Yeah, it's all upland. But I guess if you were doing an access, kind of somehow, mm -hmm. yeah, you would. Yeah, but it looks like that old rail line would make a great access to it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort of a neighborhood where you bike in and you bike out on the Carver Rail Trail. Yeah. There yeah. you go. <laughs> nice. Falmouth did a good job with their their old rail system, but Falmouth still is on. That's actually technically owned by the federal government. They just uh, the rail bed. Yeah, they oh. they allowed Falmouth the use of it because they they pulled out all the rails. Oh, okay. Huh. So there's this block that has some kind of surrounding it. Anything in this in this area? Well, I think you'd have to go to the right of Gate Street because a, a lot of that. To the left of it is that historic district. Mm, okay. No. Now, what about the brown areas up on 44? Those are, I know the one right on the highway there probably doesn't have enough room, but. Yeah, I mean, are they even, will they even be big enough to be? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. It's to be above a certain size, like A right? couple acres. Helen, can you highlight those two and, and does do you have a, a layer that tells you um the acreage? Yeah. Oh good. So we're talking um kind of these two? And yeah. and the other brown one below it with the no lower oh, with the house. To the left and down. Yeah. It looks like yeah. it has that, that one. Okay. So this one with the structure on it. It is It's a sort of like a private drive, isn't it? It's only an acre. I don't really know that lot. Yeah, it's all like one point seven acres. Across. I don't know where it is, but I forget what it's called. I'm sorry. How many acres? This is one point seven. And the and what total? about the ones abutting? I'm sorry. Yeah, abutting it. Up towards the highway. So, for example, the upland on that one is one point one. Okay, and then the. The one to the right of that one? Oh, yeah. Oh, is that the one you just did? Mm, it's different. It's different, but it's very oddly shaped. And yeah. It's like nine acres? Yeah. Um, nine acres, isn't it? How, many, how many acres? Nine acres of upland, although it's spread across this entire right. oddly yeah. shaped. Okay. I'm not sure that's developable in this. Now, where the structure is, it looks like there's three properties side by side there. Yeah, so those are the, so that's 1.7, that is 1.3, and this is... Well, not that one, but to the left. The, that one? That one is 3.3. .3. So that's a little over five acres. Is that railway dead end there, or does that continue up underneath the highway? Which one? That, whatever that roadway is, it goes in. Sorry, what <clears throat> what road is that, Adam? We get the gate street. Um, yeah. That's right. Is that off a of high street? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's is that yeah. Mills, Mills Road. Um, uh, this is Nunnius Path, right? Oh yeah, so yeah, Cold Mill Road. Cold Mills Road. Yeah, mill. yeah that that. And then mill. Cold yeah. Mill Pond is no, it way. it yeah, it leads to Cold Mill Pond. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I don't know the acreage of it there, but it used to be the old way you could get into the coal property. Oh, okay. And, and you go under the bridge, you know. Well, yeah, I don't, uh, it wasn't a bridge then. It doesn't go under the, the highway no. anymore. No, it, right? it ends, yeah, yeah, it ends yeah. at the pond. Yeah. What about the purple and yellow on the, on the left there? What are those associated with? That's a store, uh, no, it's high street, it's um, well, I'm not sure you want to do those because right. I can see that. Well, that's kind of a really scenic area, High Street. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's just my feeling. Yeah, sorry, you get the headwaters of the winter tucks that comes in up there too. It right? does. Right that's right. Off Grumpy's Brook. Right off Grumpy's Brook, and actually on High Street, uh, there's Doton Brook, which feeds into the winter tucks as well. So. Yeah, so you probably want to watch out for the water quality. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's a headwater stream. It's going to empty up. It's going to go through Clinton and Halifax and empty into the tunnel. So. That's right. Everybody thinks everything flows south, but <laughs> it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Not in town. We got two different watersheds. All right. So, well, that's a fair amount of space, guys. Yeah. Do we want to do any space? Yeah, there is some huge multi-use land in the middle there too, but I'm not entirely certain what that is. Yeah, if we zoom in on that, where is that? The dark purple? Just really like in this area here. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. this, all those three purple properties right there. They all look interconnected, actually. Yeah. So this, is this is Godfrey Circle. This is what circle? This is Godfrey. Okay. And it's all behind that. Oh. Well, isn't that Cranberry Bog back there? I believe a good yeah. portion of it is. This, this definitely looks like bog and yeah. bog. Yeah. This is upland. I don't know what this is. It just waves Bog, yeah, yeah. This is, seems like some upland between a like bunch of surrounding bogs. It's in some of that um, cranberry. Is it used? Yeah. Yeah. Probably bogging upland for sanding. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. This is this is eight, eighty acres, I believe. Oh no, I think it's helicopter pad is right. Yeah, but I think some of that land is Peter Beaton's land. Okay. And some of it may be um, the Westons. Yeah, you're right. This is Westons. Yeah, that's right. Westons. A portion of it is. Mm -hmm. And then this is made piece over here. But behind, behind Godfrey Circle, I think is. I, I don't think that's somewhere you want to make transfer of development. Um, it's just it's just not. If you've been out there, it's just not a good area to. Put stuff. Now, what about right on the Plymouth line, it's the Spring Street area? Yeah, that purple spot. I see the purple spot, but I, I was, and that other spot to the left of the purple spot is where they're tearing the hill down, correct? That area? Yeah, that purple is a solar field, right? I believe solar so. circle. Solar circle, be, yeah. That solar circle right there, I believe. Yeah, the colors that down slots. below. Yeah. But then there's those kind of light blue. Uh, parcels right along um, Spring Street. I think those are still owned by the state. But they're still homes, right? People rent them? Um, I don't think there's sure. any homes. No. no, I think they moved the home. I thought they were home. Well, yeah, actually, the homes are here. Not there. Yeah. This is that cul-de-sac that you can see off the highway. Spring Street Extension, I think is what it's called, right? Like, yeah, this is the pond right but to the right. But I think that I think that magenta is a solar field. I believe we have this water service here though. Rickets. I think these are serviced by uh, Plymouth. I'm sorry, what did you say, Kai? I think there's a water service there serviced yeah. by Plymouth. Looks like there's service here. I think so. Like the house, uh, so Spring Street extension has the houses on it, and then to the right, right. between extension and Spring Street, it looks like it's vacant. Yeah. <coughs> so all those green lots there are vacant. Uh, yeah, that lighter field color, they appear to be vacant. 
Mm. Yeah, that's the, I guess the state, public, state DPW land. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Right. The state DPW land? Is that, that's what that is. That's what we were talking about oh, before. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. Mass right. Department of Public Works. Right. Mass Start, I believe, still owns those individual parcels. Yeah, all of that stuff is. I know that's a residential area, but it might make sense to, down the road, to have that be an area that gets developed. It's a perfect spot. It is. It's right there on the Right off the highway. You know, it, there are residential homes there, but, you know, theoretically, if somebody came in down the road and, and purchased up 10 or 15 of them and wanted to put a large development in there, it, it would make sense, I would think. And you've got that existing Whistleberry Glen that's there that's not developed. That's the yellow with the three cul-de-sacs. That's a mm. pre-approved subdivision that just never was never developed. Yeah. Um, but I just would think that area of town is conducive to what we're trying to do. That's right at the entrance to the highway. It's yeah. It's, I, know, I know currently it's not ideal for it, but down the road, who knows? And then the other thing, too, given whatever the market is, Maybe SLT doesn't find what they want in terms of industrial, industrial business use yeah. for the, for that. Well, that's to the opposite side SLT of the roadway. SLT is doing this lot here. Right, so they're doing yeah. that one. Pull the sack up here. Yeah, that's the pond right there. Thickets. And, um, and then these two lots are being developed too. On either side, that was part of the plan they presented. Right. So they, you know. Maybe the market change, they may want to do more of a residential development on there, but that's one of the things. Is it limited to residential there? What's that now? Is it limited to residential or is that part of the Innovation District? So the Innovation District, so that's own, that parcel owned by SLT is Innovation District. It's that's it's that specific parcel. Yeah, right. the rest of, rest is Could residential we, agriculture. I'm not sure about the other parcels Could, across the road. Well, if they're undeveloped, we could technically expand the innovation district. Well, you know, we could, but that's not what we're doing here, is it? Right, no. <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> I just, personally, I feel like that part of High Street is very special to Carver, all the twisty, windy roads. I'd kind of hate to lose that. Um, not that I want, I don't, I'd like to see the Spring Street area of the renovation, di uh, I, I innovation district get done. I will agree that, I, yeah, it's, you know, yeah. a lot of the bikes and uh, touring clubs go use High Street and Plymouth Street. Yeah. It brings a lot of people through town. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a great. Sarah, have you already seen the roads designated in any of those areas? They're in our open space and recreation plan. Yeah, High Street's one of them. Yeah, but mm -hmm. so that's what I mean. So you're mm -hmm. limited as to what you can do there anyways. I mean, yeah. Road. So yeah, if you want to maintain it, maintain the integrity of it, that's... Yeah. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> I, I just said that because I know what was in that section. Yeah, good point, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're right. That's why it is special. You guys decided that a long time ago. Yeah. So do we want to include that, that SLT lot and then even that magenta lot? I know there's a solar field on it now, but that doesn't mean there has to be 20 years from now. Yeah. When they disc decommission it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like perfect for it. Did somebody put a big subdivision in there? It's at the end of a cul-de-sac. You can't see it from High Street. Or even commercial. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wasn't the whole purpose of the Spring Street Renovation District to bring some commercial buildings into town for, mm -hmm. you know, to, for tax mm -hmm. reasons? Yeah. You know, for but you could have mixed, oh yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But you could have mixed use, right? Yeah, you can mm -hmm. use TDRs yeah, you could. With, in conjunction with commercial yeah. development, right? If you pan a little bit further north, Helen, what's up there? Um, north of... Yeah. Okay. Mm. Mm. I'm I'm thinking along 44 there north of that lot you just changed. It's Plymouth. It's, it's in Plymouth, but that is I Plymouth. believe part of the future expansion of Colony Place. I think the Colony Place, the future expansion of the Colony Place development extends all the way up to the Carver Line, I believe. Okay. So well, theoretically, that area would be commercial. Okay. Well, 
speaking as the former conservation agent, I can tell you that all that asphalt is really, really bad for the aquifer, for our drinking water. Um, so hopefully that doesn't come, well, we don't allow malls and stuff now anyway. We're in like Kingston just to the right of us. So if you follow High Street, you hit Kingston first, mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of residential developments before you hit um, Old Colony. Sacred Heart, yeah. That's yeah, okay, Jim. You can take some of our land too. Thanks. Who supports my group? Bill's, Bill's from Kingston. Oh, where's, Kingston yeah. where's Cisco? Where's Cisco? Cisco's directly across from the innovation. To the left in Plimpton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the, the aerial image. I can't say exactly what it is, but. Yeah, and they get the concrete plants in there too, I believe. And then I believe, his, I'm sorry, I'm still learning everyone's name, but was Duke saying that maybe this parcel should also be included? This, yes. I think, yeah. He did. Is that Upland? Yeah, so the brown would be Upland, yeah. And uh, is that accessible from the other side of the highway? Right. I thought when we originally proposed the Spring Street technology park that's where I actually thought it was they had planned on going with it because hmm. that upland you could access theoretically from Plimpton Spring yeah. Street and Plimpton mm -hmm. yeah because it's undeveloped on the other that's side true. there because there's an exit an exchange right there yep yeah. mm -hmm. of course we don't know the state of the wetlands in Plimpton whether they sure get across it looks dry but <clears throat> you're actually pretty good there are uh, open space committee conservation commission yeah yeah yeah, that does look like it has access right off that um, that interchange. Yeah. Yeah, that that looks like a roadway right there, of some kind. I right think right that's right? all part of of the same property, but a, a, a certain percent. Yeah. Yep. But you see what Only I mean. Some of it's in Carver. Yeah. It looks like there's a way you could get there. Yeah, I would think so. Mm. All right, I'll zoom out to our... So we have our areas we identified up here in the northwest corner along 58, kind of this little um, spur here. Right. Any other areas we'd like to pursue that's great what about what about those agricultural properties behind shaws that are brown so off of 44 here oh, down behind we get the bog in the oh that's all isn't that all bogs so that, it is here but you've got upland here and upland here sarah is that a generation um, farm i remember when the, when shaws was going in there that was one of the big things yeah. This is the shot yeah. lot, right? Yeah, the one, the, the lot. Well, actually, there's quite, there's there's some wetlands out there in addition to the bogs. I know that. Yeah. I'm, I I kind of think that would be taken away yeah. from not Shaw's. Yeah. entering in, in the there. Carver. As it is, you see the back of the Shaw's building coming coming off the exit. but. Yeah. It's at least mixed in with the cranberry bogs well, on either side of the highway. The back of the Shaw's is, is cranberry bogs, and there's um, well, there's a brook that runs through there. Um, I'll think of it in a minute. But it, that's that's a whole riverfront area in there. Yeah, I thought I thought the uh, state had to deal with some aspects of that when they put 44, the bridge in. Well, I'm thinking of right behind... Um, it's Mahatchet Brook, that's what it is. Yeah. It runs back there. I think the uh I think the cranberry bogs in that area are, are part of 
you're entering Carver Cranberry Land. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's nice. Exactly. It's nice to see that before. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so the status of that land too, between the development of 44 and the development of Shaw's at the time, that came up as a, as a you know, red flag when when they were doing that. You'd like you have to be conscious of what's in here. Exactly. Yep. The status of the farm, the way the state holds it. So. Yep. So it's great. I and mean, like you said, those are the kind of things you want to retain too, as, as gateways. You know, mm -hmm. This is the community. This is who we are. This is what we do. Exactly. Yeah. And it is nice to see it, like you say, Connie, kind of coming in off the highway. I think we did pretty well. I think we did too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and um, so I have to depart in a few minutes here, but I guess so. My my plan will be to to add this layer to what you guys can already access online, okay. and this doesn't it doesn't have to be the end all be all. You know, we have a long time to talk this through. So if other parcels come to mind, we can always add them. Um, and I guess I think my suggestion would be that we do a similar exercise whenever you want to have us back with the sending areas at least the ones we already identified in that map mm -hmm. because it sounded from last time like we're not open or not at this point kind of willing to commit to just having uh carte blanche with the sending areas <laughs> so um right okay okay sounds great well you guys build your own map yeah that's good then we can get into the details. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Helen. Thank you, guys. Uh, Helen, are you gonna send us? Uh, you gonna break down the next sections for us and send that out for our next meeting? Yeah, it'll look really similar, kind of same layers, but it'll just be focused in those um, the um, what was blue or green on our last map. I'll show you the. So kind of, this was the map from last time. Yeah. So kind of really drilling into the areas in green here. You know, what's actually developable, what's already preserved. So we kind of get an idea of the potential that we're sending away from the sending areas. Great. Okay. Okay. Thanks, guys. Um, and then do you want to, um, I guess, Jim, if, if you guys have other agenda items, you know, just um, give us a little bit of lead time for when you decide you want to have us back, and we'll we'll do that. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Helen. Thank you, Helen. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're welcome. It's good. It's a good exercise. This is the way it should be done. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing how you can do it on the computer. Yeah, just do yeah. it instantly, yeah. and then just create a layer for that. that it's, it's amazing. And thank you. Uh, that's really good. It encourages participation. Yeah. Just what we're all about. All right. Next order of business, I believe, is uh, approval of minutes one twenty twenty one. Those are the only ones I have, so I. And just as a note. Um, if people could let me know there were some blanks to fill in on this one. Yes. If people just kind of go through and if they could write out the changes <coughs> they want to see, then give that to me, then I can make the changes. Okay. And then uh, I haven't had a chance to do the minutes for the last okay. meeting, so okay. um, I'm hoping to get some mm -hmm. more time to work on those. So, Mr. Chair, I, can I make a motion to table the minutes for now? For right, yeah, well, yeah, give okay. everybody a chance to look them over and make okay. any corrections that they might want to make. Oh, so, so you don't need a motion? I don't need a motion. <laughs> we will just put it off till the next meeting. Okay. And uh, what do we say? Uh, next meeting was proposed for the 22nd, I believe? Yes, and that's a Monday night, and that's a better night for yeah, Ellen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because she has conflicts nope. on other nights. Nope. Mm -hmm. We want to accommodate our guests. Yeah. And uh, so mark it on your calendars, okay, February 22nd. 22nd, February 22nd. Not the 17th? The not the, not 17th. the 17th. No. Okay. Um, 22nd, uh, FinCom has a meeting, but they'll be, they're will be not starting till 7, so we Yeah, be we'll, we'll be out. We'll be fine. All right, thanks. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Alan. And, uh, I would entertain a moment, uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? It's unanimous. Thank you all.